Hello, I'm Pat Obi at Purdue University, Northwest. This is the second of three mini presentations on simple linear regression. In the first short video, I laid out the motivation for a regression study. In this current video, I use Excel to demonstrate how to run a regression and then proceed to interpret the regression output. So the analysis here is based on this example in which we wish to determine if a relationship exists between fuel efficiency measured as miles per gallon and the weight of the automobile right here in pounds. So as you can see the dependent variable here is miles per gallon which is our measure of fuel efficiency for Automobile number one, for example, it weighs 2,100 pounds and gives us 35 miles to the gallon. Going down here to vehicle number eight, it weighs 2,600 pounds and gives 28 miles to the gallon. So we're going to go to Excel real quick and demo it. So here we go. That's our data set right here. So we're going to go to data. All right and go to data analysis if you do not see data analysis please go to file and go to options and go to add in and then add in analysis tool pack and after you've done that you're going to see data analysis next time you click on data all right so i'm going to go to data analysis and this is all in alphabetical order so i choose click on regression and ok for input y range i'm going to click on the word mileage and go down with it Excel allows one label, one row of labels on top of the data set. So I'm not going to start from Y. Then click right here for input X range while cursor is blinking right there. I click on the word weight and work my way down to the end. And then I make sure I check labels so the computer knows that the first row of data here contains uh, labels. And then I'm going to leave it uh, at uh, the default 95% confidence level, which is alpha of 5% of 0.05. If you want to change it to something else, then click here and change it right there. All right. For output, I click on output, and then I click right here. While my cursor is blinking right here, I choose a spot on the spreadsheet, click on it like so. And once I click on it right there, it registers. The address registers right there. Let's not worry about these other guys right now and just click OK. And that's our output right here. Now, one quick thing you can format your data in whatever way you like. Uh, one quick thing this significance F is actually p value. So I like to copy this p value right here, copy and over paste it there so it looks good. And then I can format my data if I want to which I moved it all to PowerPoint, all nicely formatted for you. All right, so there you have it. So now if you recall in the first video, I told you there are five key questions we want answers to when we run a regression. So in the order presented, here we go. Number one, is there a relationship between X and Y? Answer is unequivocally yes this regression is statistically significant and this conclu conclusion is based on this F statistic of 31.97 how do we know that this is significant well look across the road to the p-value that corresponds to it it's virtually 0 0.0013 keep in mind anytime your p-value is less than alpha which is your level of significance you will reject the null hypothesis and the null hypothesis would be that there is no relation no regression relationship so you'd reject that and conclude that there is a regression relationship between between x and y number two how are x and y related well look at the sign of this coefficient this is the coefficient of x, which is b1, the estimator for the slope coefficient. So we can see it's negative, and so we conclude that they are inversely related because the sign of this coefficient is negative. Number three, how much impact does x have on y? Well, that's based on this number right here. It's a numerical evidence 
which as you can see again has a negative uh, sign. So this is telling us that if x goes up by a unit, y is going to go down the other way around by 0 0.0177 units. For example, if x, the weight of automobile, were to go up by 100 pounds, then fuel efficiency is going to decrease by about 1.77 miles per gallon. Number four, is this impact statistically significant unequivocally? The answer is yes. The impact is measured by this t statistic value right here, 5.6542. And how do we know that this is st statistically significant? Well, look across the road again to the p-value corresponding to it, which is virtually zero. And once again, because our p-value is less than alpha of 5%, we reject the null hypothesis and conclude that the impact, the influence that x has on y is statistically significant. Well, that's about it in terms of the tests of significance. But one more thing is the measure of goodness of fit, which is the number five question. What is the percentage of explanation that is provided in this regression? Now, the answer to that is based on the coefficient of determination r square, which comes out to be 0.842 meaning that about 84% of the variation in y is explained by x. Now keep in mind that the lowest value for r squared is going to be 0, in which case no, nothing has been explained by this re regression. The highest value is going to be 1, meaning that 100% of the behavior of y has been explained by the regression on x. In this case, we have 84% approximately, which is many would conclude is a pretty healthy percentage of uh, the variation in y that this regression has explained. Delighted by this outcome? and assuming that all's well in paradise when you do your residual analysis, which will be touched upon in a different presentation, you can then proceed with the uh, with, uh, forecasting equation, which is defined out here. So using this forecasting equation, we want to know what would be the value of y miles per gallon if for a vehicle weighing 2,500 pounds. So first we define the estimated regression equation, which is the forecast equation. We plug in the y-intercept, which is 72.7755. I go back here. That's it right there. You fetch it from there. And then you substitute in the value for b1, which is the slope coefficient. Again, notice it's a negative value. And that's why this is negative. Multiplied by the value of x of 2500. That's it. You work it out and you find that for a vehicle weighing 2500 pounds, miles per gallon is going to be about 28.5. So now go ahead and try your hand using this data set right here. You can easily copy it onto Excel and go ahead and uh, read over these instructions here. And uh, if you do all things correctly and forecast the value of y, if x is 7, you're going to find the forecast value to be 94,571. Hope you enjoyed it. That's a wrap.